Hi, my name is Kyle Wong, and I'm a Pokemon trainer. Today I'm going to help you embark on your own Pokemon journey. I remember when I was in your shoes, I longed to become a Pokemon trainer and battle in the Pokemon League just like you right now. I wandered into the tall grass and was attacked viciously by a Pidgey. Luckily, I was saved by a Growlithe. That Growlithe became my life companion and is now an Arcanine. Together, we will teach you the concepts of distance, displacement, and acceleration to aid you in your Pokemon journey. Let's start by explaining these terms. Distance is equivalent to the integral of the absolute value of velocity from A to B with respect to T. Displacement is the integral of velocity from A to B with respect to T. Acceleration is equivalent to the change in velocity over time. So if velocity is positive, the displacement is positive. If velocity is negative, the displacement is negative. This explains the absolute value marking. So our objective for this section is that when we are given velocity or acceleration as a function of time for an object in linear motion, such as Arcanine, find the displacement at a given time and the distance traveled in a given time interval. Let's take a look at this problem. Suppose my Arcanine accelerated for 24 seconds. Its acceleration in miles per hour per second is measured in 3 second intervals and is listed in this table. Here's the table. A. Plot the graph of acceleration versus time. B. At time t equals 0, my Arcanine was going 20 miles an hour. Predict its velocity at each 3 second time interval from 0 through 24. Here's the graph of acceleration versus time. On the y-axis we have acceleration, and on the x-axis we have time. When the line is beneath the x-axis, then we know that Arcanine's acceleration is slowing down. Part B. Since acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time, the velocity is the integral of acceleration. You can estimate the average acceleration for each 3 second interval. Here's an example of the average acceleration for the first interval. So the change in velocity is 4.5. Since the initial velocity was given to be 20, the velocity at the end of the interval is about 24.5. This process is repeated in order to come up with the values that are given on the right side of the table. Arcanine, show them how fast you are. Use extreme speed. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I hope that this lesson has helped you in your Pokemon journey. Hopefully I'll see you sometime later in the Pokemon League. Hi, I'm Professor Luke, and I'm here to help you become a Pokemon Master. One of the most important skills is to know how your Pokemon moves work. For example, here's the path that a Pikachu took while using Agility. And here's another example of an Abra using Teleport. And like all good Pokemon Masters, they know if their Pokemon's paths are continuous or differentiable. As you can see in the graph of Pikachu's path, it is continuous because there are no breaks in the line, but it is not differentiable at the cusp, which is the jagged point on the graph. And you can see in the path that Abra took, he was walking and then used Teleport. And you can see that there is a break in the line, and this means that it is not continuous. But since it's not continuous, it also means it is not differentiable. Suppose we have the equation for Abra's path, and we want to find if it's differentiable at x equals 2. And here is the equation for Abra's path. First we plug in 2 for x, but immediately we realize that the equation becomes 0 over 0. This gives us an undefined point at x equals 2, which means that the function is not continuous, and therefore not differentiable. Differentiability implies continuity. We can see that the Abra was walking and then teleported at x equals 2. This path is not continuous because he teleported there. After mastering this important skill, you will become a great Pokemon master. But not as good as me. Hello, I'm Tower Tycoon Dale, and I'm here to teach you about related rates. Related rates can be used in situations in which several quantities vary, and you want to predict the rate at which one of them is changing if you know other related rates. To demonstrate this problem, I will use a flying Aerodactyl. When Aerodactyl is flying, it is possible for Professor Luke to write an equation for the rate of change of the line of sight distance, or z, between Professor Luke and Aerodactyl in terms of horizontal displacement, x, from Luke to the Aerodactyl. 
Assuming Aerodactyl is flying at an altitude of 100 feet, with a speed of 500 feet per minute, then Luke can't figure out the equation for rate of change. The key to this kind of problem is establishing a relationship between x and z, or the horizontal displacement and line of sight distance. Luke knows that dx over dt equals negative 1500, but he wants dz over dt. To find the relationship between x and z, Luke uses the Pythagorean theorem and gets z squared equals x squared plus 100 feet squared. Luke then differentiates the equation implicitly with respect to t, giving him 2z dz dt equals 2x dx dt. Using algebra and the Pythagorean theorem again, Luke can get dz dt equals x over z dx dt, which equals negative 1500x over z, which equals negative 1500x over the square root of x squared plus 100 squared, giving Luke the rate of change of the line of sight distance. Well, that's all I have time to teach you today. I guess we'll be going back to the battle tower. And so, our heroes continue their ways on separate journeys through the world of Pokemon, each seeking new knowledge of mathematics and calculus. Their journey may be tiring and difficult, but their unfaltering determination and indomitable spirit continues to propel them forward. In this wonderful world of derivatives, integrals, and Pokemon, our three heroes know that the knowledge that awaits them at the end of the road is worth all of their struggles, hardships, and trials. Along the way, it is certain that they will make new friends, find new Pokemon, and discover the knowledge of calculus.